Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net and today we are talking about AMD. Their new driver just came out, the Omega driver. It is a new version of Catalyst that's actually fairly substantial for the company. And I benchmarked it, I went through all the features, published a full article on the website. You can check the link in the description below if you want to read the article with all the details and screenshots. But this overview looks at some new features including VSR, which is Virtual Super Resolution, which may sound familiar to you. NVIDIA recently came out with DSR, or Dynamic Super Resolution, and they are competing uh, versions of a similar technology. So AMD is sort of stepping their game up to compete more directly with NVIDIA on the driver and software front. The new Omega driver comes after the 14.11.2, 14.11.1 betas, which were released with Far Cry and Assassin's Creed, respectively. And before them was 14.9, which was one of the more recent stable releases. Still several months old, though, so it's been months in the making for AMD to put out a new driver package that was substantial. And Omega is supposed to be substantial. They ran uh, thousands and thousands of automated test cases. They even did manual test cases. And they've really, uh, from what they told us, upped their game. So I tested this. And before we get to the benchmarks, I want to tell you about all the features that we were informed are in this new driver package. For gaming, there's VSR, which is Virtual Super Resolution. VSR renders the game at 4K, uh, 3K, 1440p, higher, effectively higher resolutions than the native resolution. So if you're playing at 1080p and you're limited by your screen resolution, you can use VSR to render the game at 3200 by 1800, for example, is the highest that a 290X will go. Or if you have a 285, then you can go a little higher than every other card. You can go up to uh, about 4K. And it renders at that resolution and then filters it down to the native resolution of the display. So what you end up with is higher detail in the output. It's still the same cost in terms of FPS as rendering true 3200, 1800, or uh, uh, 1440, those resolutions. It still costs the same resource-wise to do that, plus about a 3 to 5% overhead for the filtration process. But it smooths out textures, it reduces uh, jaggies and jittering in things like leaves and grass and other thin objects in the game that will otherwise be rendered with sort of uh, dots in the texture where the piece of the texture is missing. And that's just the nature of a higher resolution output. So this helps with that just like DSR did and it's fairly resource intensive but not terrible. It was surprisingly uh, still playable in most games with a 290X. 285 will be a bit better in, in many instances. This tech is presently only available on a few of the GPUs, including the 290X, the 285. It is not available on the R7 series yet, but they plan for it to be available on R7 and other R9 cards in 2015. Other gaming technology advancements include frame time pacing. There's better frame pacing or frame times, so that basically means that frames are delivered more consistently. There's a smaller millisecond gap and a more consistent millisecond gap between each frame. In years past, AMD was very bad about this. They would often present a frame from the GPU to the display, and then there might be an 8 millisecond gap between the next frame. And then after that one, there might be a 100 millisecond gap. And that gap is what is jarring to you as a player. It's not the time necessarily, it's the difference in time between each set of frames. That difference in time can be very off-putting as a user because your brain is detecting that these frames are not displaying at the same uh, frequency the same interval and that's where technologies like adaptive sync come in but that's a whole different field in terms of what amd has done with frame pacing here they've just made it more consistent and that is something that was true with 14.11.1 and 14.11.2 so if you're using those already you're not going to see a big difference with omega you will see a big difference with 14.9 and omega or 13.x and omega definitely there apus with omega now have a uh, about a 20% gain over the 13.6 launch drivers of APUs. So uh, if you haven't updated since the launch, first of all, you should do that every time a driver comes out, but you will have a, a very big gain with Omega. If you're on 14.11.1, 14.11.2 already, you're not going to see big gains with any video card because it's basically the same code that's in Omega except uh, there are a few new features. Other technologies include lots of updates for multimedia playback, including fluid motion video and contour removal. And fluid motion video, these, both these techs are only available uh, with Omega and only available for things like Cyber DVD 
or other multimedia players, they don't work for games. What fluid motion video does is interpolate frames for high speed scenes. For example, a car chase or an action scene with a lot of quick movement. And what, what will happen is, especially in these movies that are rendered out at 24p or 30p, you'll see a, a blurring in movement. And if you're watching this video on 30 FPS right now, you can probably see it, although it is available in 60 FPS, so you should watch it. And to reduce that blurring, we can interpolate frames temporally, meaning based on time. So AMD is looking at the previous frame and the next frame, and it's saying this looks like it belongs here in between the two, and that's smoothing them. So for a car chase, the car might be here in one frame and then here in the next one. There's a gap. And obviously that's very exaggerated for purpose of demonstration, but there's a gap here and uh, interpolation will plant a frame there based on what it thinks makes sense. And I haven't tested this yet because it's not a gaming technology, but it is something that's been developed and been in development before. And this is AMD's take on it. So hopefully it works out well for them. The next one is contour removal, which just removes sort of the graininess and mosquito effect in some film. And it does that just really all on the GPU using compute. So it's entirely on the GPU and doesn't kill your CPU too much. Finally, there's a tech that enhances the detail of video output on lower resolution devices. So if you're watching a 1080p movie on your laptop, that's 1366 by seven something, what happens is the movie will be rendered in a fashion that upscales it so that it looks like 1080 quality, even though it's on a 13 by seven screen that enhances sort of the, the texture look of different objects in the movie or playback or whatever you're watching. Finally, for AMD's Omega driver, there's huge Linux support. And a lot of that Linux support is thanks to community efforts. AMD said they're listening to the community very intently. And in doing so, they are now releasing their AMD drivers, all Radeon updates into repositories for modification by the community. It is fairly open source. They are keeping OpenGL and Direct3D and things like that proprietary for obvious reasons, but the rest of it is out there and can be modified by the community. So that's good news. Uh, OpenCL, things like that have also been updated. Check the article for information on that. It's a bit more technical. As for performance, there's almost no performance gain between Omega and 14.11.1 or .2, and that's because those drivers were lead-ins, they're betas for Omega. So this is a bit uh, disappointing and underwhelming for those of you already on beta drivers and already up to date. There's a bigger difference on 14.9. It can be anywhere from, it's about 8% for most titles that are AMD enabled, like Tomb Raider. But uh, again, if you're on 14.9, that's kind of old at this point, so you should be updated anyway. Omega in itself, not super impressive frame rate performance wise over 14.11.2 and one, but still impressive with VSR, which actually performs better than DSR in terms of raw delta between FPS. The delta displayed on the screen here for VSR going from 1080, 1440, and 1800p is better than the competition, but I'm not 100% convinced that VSR looks as good or looks better than DSR. So there, there's something there I need to do more investigation on. It'll take some effort. I'll let you know when I have updates. But in the very least, if you have a 290X or a 285, you can play a lot of these games that are out at 1440p, no problem, on your 1080 display, and it'll look a bit better. And I have screenshots here showing you the difference with Battlefield 4. Look at the trees and the foliage and the grass, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So that's it for this AMD update. Uh, I am working on a lot of stuff for CES, so do stay tuned. Subscribe if you like this content. I'll do my best to benchmark more AMD software updates. I'll look into the multimedia stuff. Leave a comment below if you have any questions at all about this that you would like to see featured in a video, and I'll give you a shout out if I can manage to get to that in time. There's a lot going on. So thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time. Peace.